CEO. So, Mike Penning to move. Madam Deputy Speaker, can I say at the outset, can I thank the Backbench Committee yeah, yeah. as well as the hundred odd colleagues from across the House that join in the application for this debate this afternoon. And for those that are watching this debate and we're thinking perhaps we're, we're a bit sparse, actually, Madam Deputy Speaker, if everybody speaks for the ten minutes, we will be filled perfectly the time span we have. And this is a great opportunity for colleagues across the House to send a message not only through the Minister, the excellent Minister on the front bench, but a message to the BBC. Can I also thank the Library for their excellent balanced paper on this debate this, this afternoon. And what I'm going to try and do, Madam Deputy Speaker, is to explain to the BBC, through colleagues, where they've got this fundamentally wrong in their demise of local radio that provides a service to our constituents and our communities that actually commercial radio can't do. <clears throat> and if the BBC are trying to compete with commercial radio in that space, then frankly they, they've lost the, the ethos of what the BBC was, is supposed to be about. There is a tax on all our constituents that have a TV or a computer that actually could receive a BBC programme and it is a tax, it's called the licence fee, which is a criminal offence not to have. That was put in place all those years ago so that BBC could provide a service which people could trust, was impartial and actually wasn't going to come from another source. Well, I naturally give way to my right I, I on thank the front. Uh, for giving way on this point. Uh, does he agree with me that actually when we're looking at the BBC ethos, uh, impartiality is right at the front of it. And in practice, many of us in this chamber, certainly I, find that lo BBC local radio, in my case Radio Humberside, is far more impartial than any national programme. Yeah, yeah. My right honourable friend, I think, has hit the nail on the head, and I'm trying to go on to expand on that trust matter and actually the level playing field which local radio is not being allowed to be in when it comes to programmes like, for instance, Newsnight or the cost of some of presenters on the BBC. My constituents through COVID were massively reliant on the information coming from Three Counties Radio. They trusted it, they understood it, and the, the, the presenters there were literally their voice of information as to what was going on during the pandemic. As this cold weather is hitting parts of the country, fortunately in, 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 in my part of the c c country it's cold, but nowhere near the sort of difficult weather that's going to go on. And some schools are going to close. There's no doubt about that. Where's that information going to come from that people can trust? It is clearly going to come from the local radio station. Now, some commercial stations will pick that up. Fine. But actually, it's the job of the BBC, because they're the ones that takes the licence fee. The BBC gets about £3.5 billion from the licence fee and a further £1.5 billion from other sources. How they spend that money is not for this House to, dis to tell them, but we can give them some advice. And some of that advice has been brought to me through my constituents who are literally in tears that some of the presenters on their local radio stations in my part of the world have been given pre-redundancy notices before Christmas telling them that they should apply for their own jobs and in some cases those jobs are not going to be there. So let's just quickly look at what the BBC has decided to do. They're proposing to allow us to have our local radio stations going a bit more in the morning, round about till two o'clock, and then we're regionalised and naturally we'll give way. Member for giving way for, for bringing this debate. Uh, there was an announcement last week about my local radio station, Radio Foil, and we won't even get morning programming. There won't be a local voice on uh, Radio Foil uh, in the northwest of Northern Ireland until half until one o'clock uh, in the afternoon. They're stripping away the breakfast programme. They're getting rid of over half of the new staff to save four hundred and twenty thousand pounds. The BBC Northern Ireland's budget is fifty five million pounds. So what they're going to do, in effect, is destroy a local, uh, a local radio station against what, the, what, their own, what their own charter says by providing local people with access to local news, all to save uh, 420 measly thousand pounds. 
when we have a massive overspent, we have a massive number of staff in Belfast, a massive building, two massive buildings, and the, 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 the axe is falling on the local community of the northwest of Northern Ireland. Surely you would agree that that's an absolute disgrace. Represents his voice of his constituents in an excellent way in the House this afternoon. And knowing the province like I do, once in uniform and back there as the Minister of State, I know how important the local radio stations are. The interesting thing is that I don't think the BBC really know what they want to do. What, what is their ethos? Where are they going? For instance, in my part of the world, they're going to cut the afternoon local radio. In the Honourable Gentleman's part of the world, they're going to cut the morning radio. I would argue that, that both are very important. Touching, going back for a moment, Madam Deputy Speaker, the weather is going to, is, we're in winter. Parents are going to take their children to school, and at some time during that day, it's quite possible, especially in the northern parts of this great country of ours, that those children may have to go home early. Now, the schools will do their level best. But actually, the local radio station will tell those parents what schools are open the following day, what schools are open that evening, whether they need to come and collect the children early. I hear it all the time on my local radio station. And those people that are dedicated are not the very rich people that work for the BBC. Now, when the Secretary of State came to the House to uh, answer questions on, on, on this uh, a few weeks ago, not only was it shocking that the, the, the department was only told the day before, when I had been told on the Friday by some of the local radio stations that they knew about this then. So that, a shocking situation where a, a, really a, an a extension of government, because they take the licence fee, weren't telling government and us telling this House what was going on, I think is absolutely disgusting. It's yeah. wrong, fundamentally wrong. Quite rightly, Mr Speaker, complains bitterly when things were announced outside. But this was also about people's jobs our communication with our constituents. And when I went back to listen to some of the comments from people in local radio, and I have to be very careful because I want to protect them, I don't want them to put them in even, even more difficult positions. But they said to me, it's not, Mr Penning, it's not a level playing field. I'm not allowed to have another job apart from working for the BBC. There are a few that are on what they call a different, slightly different contracts. But the vast majority of them is in their contract that they can't do another job in broadcasting. Now, I named a gentleman that works for the BBC that's been on our TV quite a lot recently because of the World Cup. And I named him in this chamber, the gentleman's name is Gary Lineker, and I said it, I thought it was fundamentally unfair that he earns £1.35 million pounds declared by the BBC as his income, slightly more than that, and others like uh, Zoe Ball on The Breakfast Show on Radio 2, and it's just short of a million pounds. I don't know about Zoe Ball's contract, but what we do know about Gary Lineker's contract is that he only, not only does he do advertisement for a certain Chris's company, but he actually works on BT Sport as well. Uh, and my local radio people are not allowed to do that. Now, I got lambasted by a a journalist in the Daily Mail to say, stop picking on Gary Lineker. Well, I'm not picking on Gary Lineker. I just think it's unfair on our local radio people that are prevented from having a job now while he can actually go and do jobs galore. Now, I declare an interest. I'm, I'm not going to be a hypocrite, Madam Deputy Speaker. I've declared other interests outside this House. That's within my contract. For others that are working in local radio, they cannot work in other ways. And for those people that have been given their redundancy notice, pre-redundancy notice and told that they needed to apply for their job, well, their jobs are not going to be there. So what can the Minister do for us this afternoon, Madam Deputy Speaker? The Minister is an excellent Minister, but quite rightly his, his job is not to run the BBC. But it is for this House to send a message to the BBC that they have got it fundamentally wrong to attack the low-hanging fruit of our local radio station presenters. I'll, I'll just complete this point. Got it fundamentally wrong and attacking the low bit without actually understanding the damage that is going to do to our communities around the country. I'll give one. Very good for my yeah. friends. Um, not only is it a message we need to send to the BBC, 
It's also a message that we need to send to the regulator, Ofcom. The service licences under which BBC Local Radio operate are so woolly that, frankly, there are no obligations in place that require them to be specifically local to the area that they are required to serve. Isn't it time, given that we are in the period of a mid-term review for the BBC, that Ofcom actually had some teeth and required the BBC to do what they are set out to do? You read my mind, because you may have noticed I don't read speeches in the House. My dyslexia prevents me from doing that, so I try to memorise what I'm going to say. And Ofcom is where I was moving to it in a moment. Because it's a tax, and because people have to pay it, there have to be regulators around that. And Ofcom is that regulation. It's the government to set the parameters, Ofcom to set the regulation, and the BBC to decide how they deliver that. I find it inconceivable that Ofcom would sit back and just allow this to happen when it's their job to make sure that the BBC fulfil what they're supposed to do when we set it up all those years ago with, with a li licence fee. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, I am conscious that lots of colleagues throughout the House will want to speak this afternoon, and I'm really interested to hear what they're going to say. But as BBC, I've done a brilliant thing. They have some brilliant programmes. I've fell out with them on many a time. I, would, I don't go on Newsnight these days because it's cheaper just to phone the people up that's watching it. <laughs> um, two, 200,000 people is less than the people that listen to the local radio station in my part of the world. I'll give away once more and then I will conclude. Uh, just on that point, uh, we, we share uh, BBC Three Counties as our local radio station. I'm sure he would agree every single one of those 250,000 listeners must enjoy the shows, uh, but ultimately it does, as he says, give such important local voices um, the power to, to reach into people's homes uh, at times when they need it, and they did that perfectly during the pandemic, and I, I want to pay tribute to BBC Three Counties and all of their presenters yeah, for the work yeah. that they do. Yeah, of course. I will also congratulate BBC Three Counties on, on many, many of the local issues that they pick up for us, not just because of the pandemic. But going back to the point of congratulating the BBC. They've managed to unite this House in a way that we haven't probably seen for quite some time. The nature of this confrontational chamber is what it, what it says on the tin, really. But actually, I almost guarantee that the people that are here today, colleagues that are here today, Madam Deputy Speaker, want to look after their constituents, and they want their constituents to have the best value from the BBC as possible. And if this is all about money, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm, I cannot understand why, if they're spending £5 billion, £3.5 billion of that being taxpayers' money, they can't find a better way of either looking after radio foil and saving peanuts in cash terms, or looking after our local radio station, my local radio station in Three Counties Radio, then frankly they need to get another job because they're not running the organisation organisation correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is, as on the order paper, 